holy traditions, right versus vain. Christ has a prohibited tradition in the Bible. So, are we more knowledgeable than Christ? Glory to him. He had scalded the Jewish for following their blind leaders and following their emulations, which mostly differs from God's commandments in the Bible. See what is stated in the Bible. This people draws nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. He also says in another text, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor they father and mother, and he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. Therefore, it is clear that tradition is prohibited and impersonable according to the text of the Bible. However, we see that the clergy not only believe in tradition, but also order the people to adopt tradition, and they call it the divining diving. And in the terminology of the Western Church, holy tradition, they have also found the new terms, which is the right and wrong traditions. The father of churches knows that there are explicit texts which prohibit traditions and is called whoever practices it. But what did they do to get out of this predicament? They created the term of the true traditions and false traditions in order to deceive people and make them think that there is difference between the two expressions. Whereas the meaning is one and there are neither true nor false traditions, but any teaching other than that of the Holy Bible is considered a deviation from the righteous path which God has determined to us. We mostly hear and read that in the writings of the Church's fathers and Christian researchers that tradition is the apostolic teaching which came to us through generations and fathers in contrary to what's written in the Bible. And it meets the needs of the believers in every time and place especially the church rituals and others. All rituals came to us by traditions. And they refer to the Bible text which has stated in the book of John saying, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the book. They use this text as a pretext to show that many things were not written, but have been circulated by generations through tradition. They refer to this text to pass the legality of tradition. If we accept and say that there are teachings which are not mentioned, so what are the limits of these teachings? From where do they start and where do they end? If they were from a single source, why do churches differ from each other? Why do rituals of the churches differ from each other if their source is Christ himself? As believer to Christ, glory to him, we should pay attention to these things. We should also preserve our faith by adhering to the text of the book. Hence, Christ himself ordered us to keep his commandments, saying, If ye love me, keep my commandments. He that hath my commandments, and kept them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by the Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. This is the right path to keep faith, by adhering to the book only in his testaments, and not by following the traditions of the clergies and fathers. 
regardless of their ranks and status, according to people and the church. By the way, there is a text in the book, Comparative Theology, for Pope Shinonde, the Pope of the Coptic Christians, in which he says about tradition that it is attributed to the prophets, which means in the seniority of tradition, he says that tradition is attributed to the time of prophets and that the first person to emulate is Abel, the son of Adam, the father of humans. Also, holy prophets such as Abraham, Jacob, and all who came after them. To discuss Pope's speech, we can say that this saying, with all due respect, is not true. Since the prophets receive teaching and legislations directly from God, the revelation descending to them is enough for knowing the teaching. And thus, basically, they have no need for tradition. First, why does the one who receives revelation emulate? Second, what the Pope is saying about the emulation of Abel is not true. That's because the interval of time between Abel and his father was not long, and thus there were no need for tradition. Even if Abel has emulated his father Adam, the later is one of the prophets, and he knows the teachings and the law, even though he is the source of legislations. But today, many years after Christ has left us, the spirit and core of tradition are not deviated from the righteous legislation but they are traditions of ordinary men and not prophets. They present to people rituals and teachings which might be mixed with pure mental opinions and personal effort of the human thought. We know well the difference between the words of the people of earth and that of the people of heaven. As the book says, He that cometh from above is above all. He that's of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all.